My name is Leela. I am 44 years old. I'm from Cheshire in England and I have just started on my ADHD journey. ADHD came into my life about 12 months ago when it was put to me by a friend that perhaps my daughter may be presenting with ADHD symptoms based on some complaints and grumblings I was making about her behaviour. Now, my understanding of ADHD at the time was that it was kind of disruptive, naughty children. Um, so my knowledge and understanding of ADHD was very limited. So off I went to do some research to learn a bit more about ADHD to see whether maybe she was right. And my daughter did perhaps was displaying some ADHD tendencies. Although at the point at that time, I was thinking, hmm, that's, she's so quiet. How could she possibly have ADHD? And then maybe several hours of Google searching later, I disappeared down an ADHD wormhole where I realized that actually everything I was reading was describing me and my behaviors, thoughts, feelings, emotions. And it was like somebody had just turned on a light switch. The irony of this situation and the timing of it was perfect actually because at the time I'd just come to the end of some counselling sessions and this is the third time I've kind of gone through that process because I was struggling with letting go of the past. There was things about my behaviour, things that I've done in the past that I couldn't understand, that I couldn't rationalise and I'd had three sets of counselling over a period of probably about seven years, three different, in fact, four different therapists. And none of them really, although they presented me with theories, none of them really resonated. And I came away having, yes, talked out some stuff, which was great, but still didn't really feel like I had any answers. So when I was reading about ADHD, it was like, there's my answer. And then... I'm not really sure what the turning point was, I can't remember, but it would be at the back end of last year and I just thought enough's enough, I need to know, I need to know whether I am of an ADHD mind or not. So I contacted my GP and they referred me. When I got my letter back from Warrington ADHD service, they told me I had to wait between 12 and 18 months for an appointment and I just thought I can't wait that long. So I contacted the ADHD charity in Liverpool here in the UK who were brilliant and I had to wait maybe a month or so for an appointment. I had to pay of course um, and I went for my initial ADHD screening. Now an ADHD screening um, you go through a self-assessment, well certainly with the ADHD charity you go through a self-assessment, you have an interview uh, over Zoom and then you do, you can choose, I did something called a QB test, which assesses, assesses your reaction and your response to an exercise that you have to do online. Following the assessment, it probably took about, I don't know, three or four days. And if that, and I got my report back via email and it kind of confirmed what I already knew. But in fact, it was probably more severe than I had anticipated. So for inattentive, uh, I scored nine out of nine and for hyperactive, eight out of nine. So where I'm at now is, or where I was at a couple of weeks ago when I got the report back is I had to make a choice. And to be honest, it's a difficult one because there's one side of me that thinks, well, I've managed for 44 years without knowing that I have ADHD. And shortly after I got the report, I went off on holiday. And while I was away, I was thinking, oh, I'm, I'm fine. I, you know, I don't, I don't need any medication. But of course, I'm on holiday and I'm feeling great. And my dopamine levels are through the roof because I'm on holiday. It's like one of my most favorite things to do. And then I got back and there it was. All of the, the things that made me think that I was ADHD in the first place, just there completely blocking me from working, functioning, doing what I need to do to run my business. And so I've decided to go for a full 
diagnosis and that's where I'm up to. So I've contacted the charity who have a few uh, psychiatrists that they work with that they will refer me to. And now I just have to wait for my appointment. And I suppose at that point I will have full confirmation and a diagnosis and then be able to make some informed choices about what treatment might really help me. Primarily for me, it's not really about the past. I mean, it massively helps to understand. And I think with that knowledge now, certainly, I mean, I think some of what some of my issues with how I've behaved and things I've done in the past wouldn't necessarily rear their head now anyway, partly because of my age and I'm settled down and all that kind of thing now without going into too much detail. But um, and also I've worked on myself, I suppose. Uh, but in my my day to day life, in my business and in my certainly my last job, um, it was crippling. So I feel as if without help, I'm, it's just going to be a constant struggle, perhaps maybe until I just get completely burnt out. I kind of debated a lot about whether to do this little video vlog, whatever it's called, because it's a very, very personal thing. And actually, I've told very few people about this. Um, and I haven't had a formal diagnosis yet, but I think it's, for me, a pretty foregone conclusion. Um, but I suppose... If there's one thing that I would say that I have felt throughout my life is lonely. Um, because I've felt not so much that nobody understood me, but that I didn't understand me. You know, ironically, I've spent the majority of my working career in HR, uh, having to understand other people. And I feel like I have a great grasp, a great intuition to understand other people. But when it comes to understanding me and my behaviours and why I do things and why I can't do things, that was the hardest part for me. And that was where I felt incredibly lonely, trapped, confused, perhaps at times even incredibly low and depressed. Um, so it makes me feel now like there is a reason and that I'm not just this awful, horrible person that doesn't care and does things without thinking it. Doesn't make certain things that I've done in the past right at all or justify them in any way, but it gives me a better understanding to help me move forwards. And if I'd had this knowledge years ago, I think it would have hugely helped me through those kind of critical developmental years as you go through your teens, your 20s, your 30s, but I didn't, wasn't really something that I think even many of us understood going back that far. So, but I'm still only 44. I like to think that I've got the same time uh, ahead of me. So I would really like to, and I've still got lots of, you know, lots to give my career and my business. I still have really big aspirations. I'm hugely driven. Um, so I want to use this knowledge to help myself. But I suppose if it helps somebody else who, like me, didn't even know, even suspect that they may have ADHD, who might listen to this and think, oh my God, you know, this this, this sounds familiar. Read about it, because it might be that it's something that you struggle with. Now, I think there's a very close correlation between ADHD and anxiety. Now, I do suffer acutely with anxiety, um, and the two can go hand in hand, but can also be two separate things. So I think some people perhaps confuse anxiety with ADHD, but obviously that's what the assessment process is for, is to kind of kind of decipher between the two and give you that medical perspective. Um, but I think it's important that if you're struggling and you think that there's something not right and something inside is telling you something's not right, listen to that inner voice. Um, and if this video can be of help to anybody, this vlog can be of help to anybody, then that's a bonus.